In this week's episode of Spiritual AF Sundays, we bring on intuitive guide and healer, Gabby Morales, to talk about healing journeys. Gabby shares her own journey about learning about intergenerational trauma in her family, and that not only helped her, but it helped her other relatives as well. We'll also delve into questions that leave others in paralysis by analysis mode when trying to figure out which healing method to use. It's time to grab your favorite beverage, sit in your favorite chair, and get ready for this week's episode of Spiritual AF Sundays, Healing Journeys, A Personal Tale, with guest Gabby Morales. You're listening to Spiritual AF Sundays, created and hosted by The Mystic Geek. If you're looking to explore intriguing questions about the meaning of life and our place in the universe, then you're in the right spot. We dive into topics often discussed as sound bites on social media and take a deeper look, whether it's woo topics like astrology and mysticism, or seemingly mundane matters like technology and politics, we cover it all. We explore our own thoughts and beliefs, talk to experts, and uncover hidden meanings. These fascinating areas of exploration can help us question ourselves and better understand our world. Ready to grow and explore in your spiritual journey? We're glad you can join us. It's time to start your week off by being spiritual AF. And welcome back, listeners. Today we have Gabby Morales with us to talk about healing journeys. Gabby, we're very glad to have you here today. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Tell us about yourself. Well, my name is Gabby Morales. I'm an intuitive guide and healer, and I have been through several of my own healing journeys. And I'm sure that there's going to be more to come because that's just part of our human experience. Mm -hmm. So since we're talking about healing journeys, what would you say was the most significant change for you when it came to healing yourself? One of the most powerful processes that I have been through, and it was several years long, it was an ancestral healing on my mom's side, my maternal lineage and there was or there is or there was it's not no longer happening but there was a lot of really manipulative patterns subjugation and oppression of women and a lot of abuse and this goes several generations back and while it was stopped with my mom and the abuse didn't in the actual physical sense continue or even on the emotional sense between my parents and us, the patterns were still there. The energetic patterns were still there. The cellular memory was still there, if that makes sense. A little bit. So how would you differentiate ancestral healing versus someone going in therapy and perhaps working on impact of intergenerational trauma. What would you say the difference between uh, those two approaches is? I would say it's just basically the method, the methodology. A lot of times we get lost in labels and the how. And in essence, if it leads to a place where you have untangled or unraveled yourself from these things, you get to the same place, if that makes Mm -hmm. sense. So whether it's with a therapist that does a more clinical, does it in a more clinical way, or you go to an energy healer like myself that might bring in past lives or energy work, I feel, and my mom being a psychologist, so I understand that you can get to very similar places of healing. That makes a lot of sense when it comes to handling things because when we look at especially the westernized world we're very logic oriented mind oriented so i can see us using therapy a lot and now that there's almost this reawakening of the spiritual side or this exploration of it i can see people going the ancestral healing the subtle energy route as well on dealing with these issues or even doing a combination depending on their views or what resources they have available. It's really is a beautiful thing. 
How did you get into this? Or how did you get into having this experience? It tripped me up. It tripped me over the head. (laughs) I come from, even though, like I said, my mom's a psychologist, but she has had an energy practice herself since she was much younger. It was just normal for me as a child. As a teenager, I would go to the energy healer. I'm naturally more open to those things. I just started noticing around my 20s, just certain things, certain behaviors, feelings that I didn't have a physical or in this life reason to. I just went inside and asked, and then a lot of things started coming together. My aunt, who is a healer as well, came to me out of nowhere. She didn't know that I was on this path of doing ancestral reconnection and healing. And she shared some things with me because she felt that I needed to know. And it just brought so much context to these things that were coming up for me. Originally, when I was wanting to get into ancestral healing, before I started to have some of these memories, so to speak, come up, it was more so to connect to my ancestors in a more, in a friendly way, if that makes sense. And little did I know (laughs) that I was going to open up all this history of trauma and abuse and also misuse of, you could say, magic or energy work and actual manipulation of things. So it made it very sticky to walk through. And it took quite some time for me to undo some of those dynamics within my own system. You mentioned Includes when it came to uses of magic. Are you talking about what your ancestors using magic on each other or having it used on them? On each other. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. When you went through the discovery, what was going through your mind? That's a lot to take in. There was definitely a level of grief. Now, I had already known about actual physical abuse and sexual abuse that it goes back generations. But then to add the level of magic and ritual in that abuse was, I definitely went through grief around that because I could still see, even though a lot of that wasn't going on anymore, the, the impact of that, the ripples of that were very evident in my family. Yeah, that's unfortunate. What did you do with that information? What did your healing journey look like from that point forward? It was very cyclical. It's hard to speak about it in a very linear way. Like I did this and then I did this. It wasn't that way. It was uncovering truths and the impact that it had. And I saw the very real impact in my aunts, in my grandmother, especially the women in my family. Not so much my sisters because they're a lot younger than me, but definitely still in my life. And it was just bit by bit, bit by bit. There's different levels of acceptance, different levels of energy work, different levels of releasing the grief, the hurt, the pain, you know, all of that stuff that comes with that, that level and that kind of manipulation. And also finally being able to remove any of that identity from myself. And knowing that it can exist and it does exist and it did happen, but not being or not feeling like a victim to those dynamics anymore. And I definitely see not only in myself, but I see a big change in the way that those energetics don't affect my mom anymore. I don't think it just served me. That's why I would say it has been one of the most impactful healing journeys that I've been on. You mentioned healing as cyclical, and yes, I agree on that one. And you also talked about how it 
impacted others around you who are part of your family dynamic. What do you think happened that impacted them through your own healing? I do believe that we are all connected, you know, that spiritual trope, you know, (laughs) and I am very close with the women in my family, not all of my aunts, because some of them, you can, they're still very much holding on to that patterning, those dynamics. And a lot of it is unconscious. If I were to say this to them, they would think I was crazy. (laughs) But some of them are open to that. And I think the the vulnerability and the close, the intimacy that exists between one of my aunts and I and my mom and I and my grandma and I facilitated that positive or beneficial yeah. impact That's for right. them. So since you're yeah. dealing with healing, not just yourself, but not just the living family members, but also those that passed, in that process, were you able to see the... You, I think I already know the answer on this. I think you've already know, you saw the cycles of how the injury led to people hurting themselves or hurt people, hurt people, correct? What was it like to resolve that through your ancestral line? The process was very hard and there was a lot of different kinds of emotions. Now, looking back on it, it was wonderful. Or it's, I'm so happy that I went through it because there's a lightness that wasn't there before. There is grace and acceptance and love where it wasn't there before. And I would also say that even though I took it a step or two or three further to the point where I don't feel like I'm holding on to these dynamics anymore. My mom and my aunt did a lot of that healing in a different way. My aunt also is an energy healer, but my mom also does a little bit of energy healing and is a therapist herself. They made sure from the time that they were very young And they had a commitment to not perpetuate these patterns and to not take advantage of and manipulate things as they saw. (laughs) And so that also helped. You mentioned the clinical world earlier. I'm forgetting how exactly you phrased it, but there's, from my perspective, there's room for everything because we are everything and we're all very different at the same time and I don't necessarily believe there's only one way to do things and I also believe that everything is cumulative I don't know that I would have been able to do all of this without their commitment like I said early on to not perpetuating some of these patterns without my aunt providing a lot of the things that she was receiving and and I would say my own soul as well (laughs) sometimes I was just guided into different ways of going about this that my mind just didn't find logic in it happens and it's a little humbling and intimidating when it does happen but at the same time it's pretty awesome So question on this, let's say that someone out there who is listening to this at some point in time in the future realizes there is something wrong in their life, that there's injury, that there's ongoing patterns of being hurt and unintentionally hurting others through that, or just simply they know that they need to heal from something, but they're having a hard time even articulating what it might be. What guidance would you give them on next steps? I would definitely say to find someone that they trust that is qualified to walk them through. And when I say walk them through, I don't necessarily mean to give them all the answers, but to create a space. From my perspective and experience, a healer is not someone that comes in and does all the work for you. We create an environment in which you feel safe enough 
to access some of those deeper truths within yourself and some of those deeper abilities, so to speak, because I do believe that we are all self-healing, that we can self-heal. Now that takes different forms and there's also very powerful healing that happens through community and through connection. But that healing is available inside of all of us, that innate ability to heal. And all that to say is that when we feel, when we feel like we've either hit a wall on our own or when we're starting out with something or when we're being faced with a part of our healing that feels really big, then in, at least in my experience, it's been very powerful to partner up with someone that can create and hold that space and witness us in this process. And that can help pull at the strings and say, hey, what about this? Hey, what about that? Again, not necessarily giving all the answers or doing all the work for us, if that makes sense. It does. And you bring up an interesting point on this. We live in a world that has like a giant self-help industry. We have that ability to self-heal as you shared. And you touched upon it a little bit on how having someone else there to witness and guide can help with that healing process. Do you feel it's absolutely necessary to have that person to stand witness? Or do you feel that some people may be able to self-heal completely on their own? I think some people are able to do it to a big extent on their own. I also recognize that, again, to different extents, we are social animals. And that a need many times, not all the time, <laughs> to do things completely all the time, absolutely on our own, it is not always the best for us. But I do believe, because I have done a lot of my own healing myself at the same time that I've had mentors and teachers and other healers that I could lean on. So I hope that answers your question. <laughs> it does. It does. I like to feel out what people's views on it. My own take on it is sometimes our desire to handle it completely on our own comes from a place of injury that we may not even be aware of. So some people, if they know that issue, they're fine. But at the same time, a lot of us may not even be aware that, that is a blind spot for us. Yeah, I would agree. This society has, how do I put this? It has created the situation of this dynamic in which as we get older, we become more and more removed from who we really are, our essence, which is wild to me. <laughs> But, and I just find that because of that, we don't trust as much. Not only do we not trust ourselves, but we don't trust others. Mm -hmm. Because inherently, I feel like we are truth-telling machines, like, or truth-feeling machines. And so much of this society doesn't feel like it's for our best interests. And so it's no wonder that most people have trust issues. <laughs> And I can see why many times it is hard to trust someone else into with a very vulnerable part of our being. Exactly. Yeah. Gabby, thank you so much for being here and sharing your experience and your wisdom. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with our audience before we go? No, I think just love yourselves. I know it's a slogan and a lot of people say it, but I really feel that the more we can love ourselves and cultivate that relationship with ourselves, the more easeful and happier this existence can <laughs> be. Amen to that. So where can people find you online? I am mostly on Instagram at soulalchemy.com. We'll make sure to include that in the show notes. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. That was a fascinating conversation. I know it may have been a little light on the details on what was being healed or how, 
One of the challenges with sharing healing journeys is that sometimes the initial pain is so personal that it might be too difficult to share with a larger audience of acquaintances or the unknown. There are some things that I gleaned from my conversation with Gabby that I'll recap here. First off, when it comes to the house of healing, do whatever feels right for you. For some of you, this may mean working with a counselor or a therapist. For others, it may be focusing on the spiritual energetics rather than the mental space. And for others still, it may be a combination. Another thing I gleaned from the conversation is that sometimes healing requires us to be curious, to seek out which patterns of behavior we do that we either are not happy about or that we don't understand why we do those things. And it's important for us to dig into the why. What happened that led to those essentially coping patterns to occur within us? One final thing to keep this as a set of three is that healing is more cyclical than linear. There are ups and downs. You think you're done with something only to find out you now need to work through a slightly different variation of what triggered you. Okay, I thought I was done, but I actually wasn't. One more thing, it's okay to ask for help. It's normal to ask for help. We all have blind spots and a helper, be it a counselor, energy worker, what have you, can see what we don't. We are also social creatures. This whole self-help, trying to tackle things completely on our own is not what we're designed for. With that, let's pivot to what's coming up over the next two weeks. Next week on September 10th, we are bringing on Lucy Bird Hope to discuss mind, body, and spirit alignment. The following week on September 17th, I'm going to be discussing how to honor Mabin or Mabin, however you pronounce it, in the modern day. Those who've heard my Lunasa episode know that I'll not only look at the lore that Mabin is drawn upon, but also contemporary social and political issues that align with the themes of that festival period. So this wraps up another episode of Spiritual AF Sundays. Be kind and have a Spiritual AF Week. Thank you for joining us for Spiritual AF Sundays. This show is hosted by the Mystic Geek, that's me. Got comments or questions from today's episode? You can either email me at jess at themysticgeek.com or send me a voice message at speakpipe.com slash themysticgeek. Don't worry, I'll put the link in the show notes. Help others start off their week with a spiritual AF Sunday by sharing this episode with them. Also, five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts help spiritual seekers find our show. So do the thing. <laughs>